opinion personally even interest on the case portion also cannot be demanded today even though there is a delayed payment of tax because section 54 one uh, there is today there is a machinery provisions are not existing whereby i can determine the due date from which i have to determine the interest obviously for computing the uh, interest liability i need two dates one is due date on which i ought to have discharged my liability and another is the date of payment these two dates are unless determinable my interest liability cannot be determined in my opinion probably section 50 sub section 1 is missing on this point read with the relevant rules today it is cannot be made operative in this manner therefore even the liability to claim uh, recover the interest even on the case portion can also be a subject matter of dispute next coming to the precondition of availment of itc again a very hard bending issue and which will see more and more fireworks in the coming days friends next as you know there are four conditions for taking the itc as prescribed under section 16 these four conditions are one the goods should have been actually goods or services should have been received by the taxpayer two that he is in the possession of the tax invoice or debit not he has received the goods or services or both and three next subject to the the provisions the tax charge in respect of such supply has been actually paid to the government either in case or through utilization of input tax credit admissible in respect of the said supply and for he has furnished the return under section 39 first two conditions are quite uh, simple that tax payer should have received the goods or services that is his input procurement on which he is claiming the credit and he should be in the possession of the valid tax invoice uh, there is no difficulty this is more or less the similar view uh, similar coming from the senvet credit and the earlier modvet days the third condition is that the supplier should have discharged the tax liability either in case or through itc in respect of the supply made to the tax payer recipient tax payer we will be discussing about this third condition and the fourth is he has furnished the return under section 39 friends uh, please i will clarify one here the word he expression he here it does not refer to the vendor he here refers to the recipient tax payer so do not make any mistake if you read the entire four clause a b c d uh, in a conjoined manner and carefully the word he here describes the recipient tax payer and not the vendor as far as the vendor or supplier is concerned the only condition sirf ek hi sarth wahan pe sambandhit hai wo clause c ki sar ke he should have paid the money tax to the government but fourth condition jo hai chauthi jo sarth hai ki unko section 39 mein return file kiya hua that applies to the recipient uh, tax payer and not to the uh the vendor tax payer there is some confusion this is my personal view next now the problem with this section 162c that one of the condition about supplier failure to pay tax will result into the denial of the itc to the recipient buyer first of all let me clarify no such condition and most of you will be aware also no such condition ever existed under excise or service tax under senvet credit rules there was no such condition at any time not even in the passing government had ever introduced such condition under excise and service tax this whole controversy has controversial provision is the legacy from the wet regime most of the state ke rajya ke jo wet ke jo adhiniyam the usme ye condition thi ke agar सप्लायर ने टैक्स अगर नहीं भरा है भुगतान नहीं किया है तो बायर को क्रेडिट नहीं मिलेगी सेट ऑफ नहीं मिलेगा मेनली दिस ऑल प्रॉब्लम एट स्टार्टेड बिकॉज ऑफ द बोगस बिलिंग एंड दिसअपियरिंग द यू नो दिशिंग डीलर्स एज आई वुड कॉल इट बिकॉज ऑफ देम फ्रॉम द बॉम्बे हाईकोर्ट इन महालक्ष्मी केस मैटर वेन टू सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड देर आफ्टर दिस बिकेम द पार्ट ऑफ द ऑल द स्टेट वेट लेजिस्लेशन के जहां पे डीलर अगर डिफॉल्ट है डिफॉल्ट में है या तो डीलर अगर फ्रॉड है तो भी ये बायर अगर जेन्यून है तो भी बायर विल नॉट गेट द बेनिफिट ऑफ द सेट ऑफ फॉर इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट 
or this provision at the insistence of the states only, the union had to introduce under the GST. Otherwise, union probably, as I understand, central government and the board were not uh, happy with introduction this provision in the law. But there was an insistence on part of the states that we want this type of provision also. And now this has created a problem everywhere. The first is, you see, in the COVID-19 era particularly, this condition can have serious implications, particularly for the MSME units. For instance, if a registered taxpayer is MSME, koi bhi hai, this will apply to everybody. I'm just giving the MSME uh, because they might be much more uh, at the receiving end of this type of uh, condition. If a registered taxpayer is recipient, the buyer is the input or input service, hai, jiske par legally he is entitled to the tax uh, credit. He has payment to the supplier, ko, lo. but if the supplier has not paid tax, then he will lose the credit, the buyer. If the supplier ne pay, uh, fails to pay, the, the buyer, the MSME, ke tar, wo supply karte hai large business unit. So the large business unit will lose the credit, which probably will uh, discourage them from uh, you know, undertaking any more businesses with such a defaulting taxpayer. COVID-19, MSME are in an extremely bad condition. They may have their own uh, problems in making the payment because of the case liquidity, not because they want to defraud the government. But still, this will be the repercussions. Similarly, so chahe liquidity problem ho, chahe unit close ho gaya ho, chahe bankruptcy proceeding chalu ho, ya koi bhi reason ho, agar koi registered taxpayer genuine reason se bhi agar tax ki bhuktan nahi kar raha hai, then unho ne jo mal supply kiya hai, ya services supply ki hai to the buyer, the buyers may tend to lose the credit. And Syed, this in the coming days, in another two, three years, four years, uh, in the coming days, as I would say, this problem is going to surface like anything. That is what my apprehension is. Next. Having said this, let us now look into whether this provision is constitutionally valid or not. And in the earlier wait regime, a similar type of provision has been challenged in number of cases before different high courts. This is the complete more or less the uh, majority of the cases which I have cited here. And in all these cases, the high courts have clearly hold, taken a view that a buyer cannot be un, uh, actually do something which is impossible. A buyer cannot be done to, no law never compels anybody to do the impossible. It is impossible for the buyer to ascertain and ensure that the supplier or vendor will actually comply with the law. वो उसके हाथ पकड़कर उसके पास से टैक्स भुगतान नहीं करवा सकता है। उसके he has no means to know whether the buyer will be uh, the supplier will pay the tax or not, is paying the tax or not, whether he is correctly paying the tax or not. So he cannot, and therefore a genuine bona fide buyer uh, cannot be disallowed the credit merely because there is a defaulting supplier or even if there is a fraud, uh, the supplier is a fraud. This is the, uh, this is the, in general, this one of the important judgment on this is that of the Genulal Balchand, uh, Jharkhand Wet uh, I Court judgment. That is very important judgment on this issue. Now, having said this, uh, there are interesting cases of the ECJ, European Court of Justice, which I have cited. A similar issue had arisen and have been arising even under the international weight regime. Friends, let me say one thing. Weight or GST, as some, some countries call it GST, some countries call it VAT. VAT or GST is basically operating through the invoice credit method is a very, very fraud prone tax. Kafi fraud hone ki sambhavna isme rehti hai. Or hum dekh rahe hai, every day, bogus billing is one of the major fraud committed. Carousal fraud happens. Vanishing dealers, as it is known as. These are all the frauds. It is not only happening in India. These are happening across the world in majority of the countries, 190 and more old countries who have adopted the weight. Every developed countries is also facing to some extent or other the serious problem of frauds under weight. So it is not restricted only to India. Now, under these circumstances, the question arises, if the seller is the fraud, 
because of that whether buyer can be denied the credit or not and european court of justice the equivocal view a, a consistent view has been that that unless and until buyer's involvement or complicity in the fraud being committed by the supplier seller or vendor is established buyer cannot be denied the credit merely because the supplier has not paid or defrauded the government agar buyer ki khareedar ki khud ki involvement jo vendor ya supplier jo fraud kar raha hai maan lo bogus billing kar raha hai usme agar usme khareedar ka ya buyer ka involvement agar sabit nahi hota hai to merely because supplier is fraud aur supplier ne tax ki bhugtan nahi ki hai फॉर देट रीजन बायर को क्रेडिट डिनाई नहीं की जा सकती है यह एक कंसिस्टेंट व्यू हम यहाँ पे यूरोपियन कोर्ट ऑफ जस्टिस ने लिया हुआ है और यही व्यू बाय एंड लार्ज दिस वेरी व्यू हैज बीन इन वन वे और अनदर हैज बीन एक्सेप्टेड एंड एक्सप्रेस इन ऑल द प्रीवियस जजमेंट ऑफ द डिफरेंट डिफरेंट हाई कोर्ट इन इंडिया ऑल्सो एंड पर्सनली नेक्स्ट पीस सो पर्सनली माई व्यू इज दिस next next ha huh. so personally my view in the earlier one is is this that uh, the this particular legal view will continue to prevail and should continue to prevail under gst regime also and therefore 164 mein jahan pe bhi 162 सी की जो कंडीशन है कि बायर ने अगर टैक्स की भुगतान नहीं की है और सेलर ने टैक्स की भुगतान नहीं की है सॉरी तो बायर को क्रेडिट नहीं मिलनी चाहिए मियरली फॉर दैट रीजन आई फील दैट सेक्शन 162 सी इज अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल इनवैलिड एंड इट विल आई विल नॉट बी सरप्राइज इफ इट इज स्टक डाउन बिकॉज इट कैन नॉट पास इट हैज नो सेंटिटी इन लॉ इट प्रोबेबली कैन नॉट पास द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल मास्टर ऑल्सो एंड Uh, and it has already been challenged in many cases also as i said i will still repeat however if the buyer's involvement in the fraud being committed by the supplier and whereby he is actually not paying the tax if that involvement is established then the matter may take the entire different dimension that should be kept in mind coming to the next issue section 164 uh, time limit for availing itc next friends section 164 uh, prescribes the time limit for availing the itc in short it says any itc on any invoice or debit net for a financial year should be taken before the expiry of the due date for furnishing the annual return for that financial year or the date of filing of the return due date for the filing of the return for the month of september of the next financial year of the subsequent financial year in other words whichever is earlier so in other words today in the current scenario financial year 1920 ke koi bhi invoice ya debit pe agar mujhe credit leni hai to either mujhe annual return 1920 ke annual return ki jo due date hai ya to fir september 20 ka jo return mujhe jo भरना है विच वॉज यस्टरडे ट्वेंटी अक्टूबर ये दोनों में से एक तारीख जो सबसे पहले है उसके पहले मुझे वो क्रेडिट लेनी है इन अदर वर्ड्स फॉर नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी एज पर दिस प्रोविजन माई राइट टू क्लेम द क्रेडिट ऑन इनवाइसिस और डेबिट डेबिट नोट फॉर लास्ट ईयर हेज नाउ एक्सपायर्ड यस्टरडे दैट इज द सम एंड सब्सटेंस ऑफ दिस प्रोविजन सिमिलरली एटीन नाइनटीन की जो क्रेडिट थी वो शायद थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च ट्वेंटी वॉज द लास्ट डेट एक्सटेंडेड डेट for the september month so that is also gone 1718 is also gone now the question arises next please next okay whether this time limit is valid in the eyes of law that is the question which we will have to answer ourselves before that let me once clarify one important thing the previous topic may we were discussing about 16 section 162 aur usme char condition thi and those four conditions were so, tax payer should have received the goods or services tax payer should have received the invoices also supplier should have paid the tax 
and taxpayer recipient taxpayer should have filed the return these are the four condition ye four condition agar fulfill fee ho rahi hai to bhi section 164 ki time limit will be relevant as per the plain reading of the uh, law plain reading of the law agar wo char mein se hi ek condition agar main fulfill nahi kar raha hu to fir ye time limit becomes totally immaterial ye baat hame khayal mein rakhni hai this time limit is in addition to the four conditions prescribed under section 162 this should be kept in mind always now the question here is okay, whether this time limit is valid or not if you see the time limit speaks about two dates one is due date for furnishing the return for annual return of the financial year which normally is 31st december of the next financial year or the date of furnishing the return for the september i mean uh, uh, succeeding financial year so 1920 ke liye september 20 ka return jo due date hai wo main kar raha hu and here the due date everybody understands is to be return to be 3b so agar gst or 3b jo main 20 october ko file kar raha hu isliye meri kal meri time limit expire ho gayi this is the general understanding legally is it really so that is the question we have to ask ourselves there are quite a few aspects from which this entire issue can be discussed and understood first of all in my opinion section 161 jo paramount section hai which allows the benefit of itc reading that section in terms of that section 161 whether this type of time limit can be prescribed and whereby my the such a arbitrary time limit can be prescribed or not and whether my right to claim the credit rightfully can be taken away in my opinion this is a serious subject matter of challenge this are all for the high court to decide but yes it can be challenged on the ground that the time limit prescribed under section 164 is invalid discriminatory and unreasonable the second is and which is much more important which is important thing the return ki jo baat ki gayi hai section 164 mein that is under section 39 Section thirty nine prescribes the return to be filed in form three, as you know, GSTR form three. However, section thirty eight me GSTR two uh, and section thirty nine me GSTR three, as all of you are aware, they are on the suspend. They are right now under suspension. Practically, they are suspended sine die. So they are not under operation. In this place, we are GSTR three B file kar rahe hai. so therefore the question arises whether 3b can be said to be a return in lieu of 3 if the answer is yes then obviously this time limit will be operative if the answer is no then this time limit cannot be said to be operative if you see by 49 by 2019 the amendment was made to rule 615 rule 615 mein amendment karke usko retrospective effect di gayi hai whereby 3b has been now declared as a return in lieu of 3 the words used is not in lieu of what has been done is this ke agar taxpayer agar 3b file kar raha hai then commissioner will notify that he need not file 3 it means the the intention is this that the 3b is in replacing 3 can it be done so and whether is it really so without going into the history in detail friends if you see when the 3b was introduced gst council meeting if you see in detail gst council uh, had the never considered 3b as a replacing 3 or in lieu of 3 they have always called it as a stop gap arrangement it was a stop gap arrangement it remains a stop gap arrangement by rules it cannot be made a re return replacing 3 Incidentally, initially 20 दिन के लिए जुलाई सेवनटीन में ही बीस दिन के लिए थ्री बी वॉज एक्चुअली मेड इन लियो ऑफ थ्री हाव एवर इमीजिएटली देर आफ्टर गवर्नमेंट एक्चुअली रिमूव द ओमिटेड द वर्स इन लियो ऑफ तो देर इंटेंशन वॉज वेरी क्लियर के थ्री बी इज नॉट ए सब्सटेंशियल रिटर्न लाइक थ्री एंड नाउ इट कैन नॉट बी मेड और कैन नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड एज ए इन लियो ऑफ थ्री अगर जी एस टी आर थ्री बी cannot be said to be in lieu of 3 then the question of uh, you know my 
considering it is a return under section 39 for the purpose of section 164 does not arise if it is my contention and which is my contention also in fact that 3b being not a return in lieu of 3 3b cannot replace 3 rule 615 and the retrospective amendment is definitely subject matter of a serious challenge and it has already been challenged as i mentioned some of the cases over here therefore up and come in no doubt that was the first judgment but that has already been notice has been issued by the supreme court it is before supreme court thereafter all these amendments have taken place the question here is that agar 3 3b 3 ki replacement nahi hai ya in lieu of 3 nahi hai then my september 20 ka return which i filed yesterday or which for with the last date was yesterday it is only for 3b not for the return gstr 3 under section 39 and gstr3 is not even operative today it is under suspension that be the case uh, the question of applying section 164 does not arise at all to put it other way around two dates are given under section 164 for credit lene ke liye jo samay maryada nakki nishchit ki gayi hai section 164 mein usme do date di gayi hai dono mein se jo earliest hai mujhe lagu karni hai एक है एन्युअल रिटर्न की ड्यू डेट या तो फिर सितंबर महीने की सेक्शन 39 में जो रिटर्न में फाइल कर रहा हूं नेक्स्ट ईयर के सितंबर की वो डेट बट एन्युअल रिटर्न तो चलो फिक्स है वो ड्यू डेट मुझे पता है क्या है हाव एवर अगर सपोज 1819 1819 की जो ड्यू डेट सितंबर महीने की थी मान लो वो 20 अक्टूबर थी 20 अक्टूबर नाइनटीन थी बीस uh, अक्टूबर ट्वेंटी एटीन नाइनटीन की नाइनटीन थी आई एम सॉरी 1819 के फाइनेंशियल जिसका एन्युअल रिटर्न हमें अभी बाकी है भरना बाकी है उसकी एन्युअल रिटर्न डेट आज की तारीख में 31 अक्टूबर है उसकी सितंबर 19 को रिटर्न 20 अक्टूबर थी तो क्या 1819 की डेट का, कानून के हिसाब से 20 अक्टूबर 19 गिनी जाएगी और उसके पहले मुझे क्रेडिट लेनी थी आज मैं नहीं ले सकता हूँ ये प्लेन मीनिंग है परंतु अगर मेरा ये कंटेंशन है अगर मैं ये ये बात है कि मेरा थ्री बी इज नॉट ए रिप्लेसिंग थ्री एट ऑल और थ्री की तो कोई डेट ही नहीं है वो तो सस्पेंडेड है तो मेरे सितंबर नाइनटीन के रिटर्न की डेट आई वो मैं कैसे कह सकता हूं वो डेट आई ही नहीं है इफ वन डेट इज मिसिंग टू बी डिटरमिन देन देर इज नो क्वेश्चन ऑफ अप्लाइंग सेक्शन सिक्सटीन फोर एट ऑल एंड देर फोर इन माई पर्सनल ओपिनियन द क्रेडिट कैन ऑल्सो बी टेकन इवन फॉर सेवनटीन एटीन टू डे if genuinely somebody has missed it can also be taken even for 1819 if somebody has missed and even for 1920 if somebody has not taken yesterday i know gstn again system will not allow this to be taken and there is absolutely no harm in claiming this right through the manual filing and then take it up the matter because this matter is right now before three four high courts in matter and personally i feel that uh, the there is a there is an extremely serious challenges on various grounds against this entire provision some in substance even if to conclude even if i presume that the legislature ke paas satta hai samay maryada itc credit lene ke liye nishchit karne ki satta hai aur wo wo power se that is a legislative prerogative even if i accept that then also in the today's scheme of the things this time limit is not operative cannot be made operative at all in view of the various pro, uh, challenges and various issues connected with this entire controversial issue and therefore there is no harm in staking the claim even today next thirty six four again another headache next you know that friends on the same date when the uh, section six, rule 615 was actually replaced and was given retrospective effect jo abhi humne discuss kiya in the same by the same notification sub rule 4 was introduced in rule 36 or some substance of this rule is this ki har month ke end mein main gstr 1 file kar raha hu aur uske baad jo 3b aur mere vendors bhi gstr 1 file kar rahe hai which are there after auto populated in the form of 2a jo 2a mein recipient buyer ki tarah mein mein i will be able i am able to actually uh, look at it in the system aur wo 2a pe 
जो मुझे वेंडर्स के इनवाइस अगर अपलोड नहीं हुए हैं देन आई हैव टू रिस्ट्रिक्ट माय क्रेडिट जो वेंडर्स के इनवाइस अगर नहीं हुए है तो मुझे आई हैव टू रिस्ट्रिक्ट माय क्रेडिट टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द इलिजिबल क्रेडिट एंड विच वॉज लेटर ऑन नाउ रिड्यूस टू टेन परसेंट माइंड यू दिस रूल एज यू आर ऑल अवेयर जहां पे जो वेंडर के इनवाइस मुझे फुल दिख रहे हैं अपलोड हो चुके हैं वो मैं फुल ले रहा हूँ बट सिवाय अगर कोई भी इनवाइस कोई भी वेंडर के एक भी इनवाइस अगर अपलोड नहीं हुआ है तो तू डेट एक्सटेंड मुझे टोटल एलिजिबल क्रेडिट जिनके अपलोड जो आई विल कॉल इट ए रिकनसाइल जो रिकनसाइल इनवाइस पे मुझे फुल क्रेडिट मिलेगी अनरिकनसाइल इनवाइस पे मुझे टोटल रिकनसाइल क्रेडिट की टेन मिलेगी आज की तारीख में and whether this provision is valid in the eyes of law or not that is the subject which we will be challenging you know that ki uh, covid ke karan uh, usko ye pure provision ko suspension mein rakha gaya tha up to april to august you can now do it up to 20 september uh, 20 october aur september ka aapko separate karna hai jiske bare mein board ne 10 din pehle jo circular issue kiya tha i am not going into the technical nitty gritty of that today we are looking into whether this restriction is valid or not next this restriction is closely related to rule 61 and being closely related to rule 61 this can be sub rule 5 jo unhone kiya hai so without going into too much of detail uh, just to take the no, uh, next uh, slide please yes ye unki history hai now the question is the first of all 364. If you everything stems from section 16. Section 16 में सबसे पहले कहीं पे भी ऐसी कोई भी प्रोविजन नहीं है देर इज एब्सोलूटली नो प्रोविजन वेयर बाय माई राइट टू क्लेम द क्रेडिट कैन बी रिस्ट्रिक्टेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द इंफॉर्मेशन और वॉट हैज बिन डन और वॉट हैज नॉट बिन डन बाई द थर्ड पार्टीज जिस तरह से मेरे वेंडोर ने अगर टैक्स नहीं भरा है but genuinely i am a bona fide buyer i have paid the tax i have actually paid him also uh, i cannot be denied the credit jo bhi humne jiske bare mein charcha ki similarly agar mere vendor koi bhi karan se agar invoice upload nahi kar rahe hai i cannot be denied given the restricted credit section 16 mein aise koi powers nahi hai whereby such type of restriction can be put under so in my opinion rule 364 is ultra virus section 16 secondly rule cannot actually overreach or and uh, cannot go beyond the statute you know that the reimbursable expenditure mein senvet credit mein service tax mein intercontinental delhi high court had declared the rule 5 uh, whereby this reimbursable expenditure were subjected to the tax subject to condition as ultra virus and this was upheld by the supreme court also the same principle will apply here rule cannot 364 is going beyond section 16 and therefore the uh, you know i cannot actually uh, be denied that credit friends uh, my i beg your pardon ye 364 ki discussion ki slide hai upar ka heading kuch by mistake uh, that has been actually wrongly mentioned so don't get confused uh, i will change it and i will send the modified uh, ppt jo bhi mistake choti moti isme hai the another thing is the entire condition of matching the credit is under section 43 and 43a right from there the power flows such power cannot be traced under section 16 at all 364 is basically 2a wo matching ki baat hai that matching ke powers are not there at all section 16 does not deal with the matching at all it is being dealt with under section 42 43 and 43a at all and the entire this credit which is not only unreasonable it is also practically inoperative also there are practical situation whereby this entire operation uh, 364 cannot be made operative let us give a let us i'll give you one example suppose my re- unreconciled credit jo invoices jo upload nahi hue hai wo agar 10% se niche hai 10% reconcile credit ke 10% se total quantum of credit involved is lesser than 10 10% i am not required to follow 36 for at all because the wording of 36 for is that the taxpayer should not take the credit 
no so, so take the credit not more than 10% of the itc which is reconciled not more than 10% it is how it is worded agar meri unreconciled credit hi totally jiske upload nahi hue hai wo hi agar 10% ke niche hai then 364 will not come into play at all to that extent this rule is also arbitrary and discriminatory similarly जो लोग क्वार्टरली रिटर्न भर रहे हैं जो मेरे वेंडर्स है जो क्वार्टरली रिटर्न भर रहे हैं बिकॉज दे आर स्मॉल वेंडर्स टिल द क्वार्टर इज एंडेड देयर इन वॉइस विल नॉट रिफ्लेक्ट अंडर टू ए बेस्ड ऑन दैट वेदर कैन आई बी डिस क्रेडिट एज अ बायर फ्रॉम दैट परस्पेक्टिव ऑल्सो दैलिडिटी ऑफ दिस रूल कैन बी सीरियसली चैलेंज आई अंडरस्टैंड कि अभी टू बी वगैरह में दे आर गोइंग टू टेक जनवरी के बाद पूरे सीनेरियो चेंज होने की संभावना है the purpose and objective behind introduction of this uh, absolutely absurd provision has been to uh, because they found that ke there is been a lot of gap in the filing of the returns visa vis the number of people who are registered to basically to discipline them and to basically force them to come forward and file the returns and to upload the invoices this provision has been introduced but uh, having said that the validity and constitutional validity of this provision is under serious challenge it has already been challenged before few high courts and and based on this provision agar department koi bhi action recovery ki le rahe hai like a recovery and freezing the itc account freezing the bank account again it can definitely be challenged before the high court and it should be challenged next next yes section 16 sorry previous one yeah these are the two extra topics which i wanted to speak about section 16 itc and failure to pay the supplier if you friends you are aware that uh, there is a condition for making the payment to the uh, the vendor uh, under section 16 to second and third proviso humne char condition ki baat ki section 16 mein two mein just to repeat the supply uh, the recipient taxpayer should have received the goods or services he should be in the possession of the valid invoice supplier should have paid the tax and the recipient taxpayer should have filed the return under section 39 these are the four condition fifth condition is about the time limit ke within which period he should take the credit for a particular invoice or debit note for a particular financial year this was the, and the sixth condition yahan pe bhi ye panch condition agar hum uski वेलिडिटी uh, को मान्य भी रखे कानून उसको मान्य भी रखे तो यहाँ पे भी बात खत्म नहीं होती है देर इज अक्स कंडीशन बायर शुड एक्चुअली मेक द पेमेंट टू द सप्लायर विद इन हंड्रेड एंड एटी डेज ऑफ द डेट ऑफ इश्यू ऑफ द इनवाइस बाई द सप्लायर एंड दिस कंडीशन बेसिकली यू विल फाइंड अंडर रूल सेवन ऑफ द सेंड्रेड क्रेडिट रूल इन केस ऑफ सर्विस इज दिस रूल दिस कंडीशन हेड बिन प्रिस्क्राइब the buyer has to make the payment within this stipulated time this has been continued even under gst now the question is okay if there is a failure if the buyer recipient buyer agar 180 days mein jo covid 19 ke is era mein uh, aisi sakyata baro bar hai uh, kafi hai ke jahan pe buyer may not be in a position to make the payment to the supplier within 180 days aur ye kisse abhi nazar aa rahe hai samne to buyer has to reverse the credit with interest thereon लेकिन वेन ही मेक्स द पेमेंट अगेंस्ट टू द सप्लायर लेटर ऑन सपोज दस महीने के बाद अगर वो पेमेंट कर रहा है तो ही कैन अगेन टेक बैक द क्रेडिट बट ही विल नॉट बी एबल टू टेक द क्रेडिट और रिफंड ऑफ द इंटरेस्ट सो इंटरेस्ट विल बिकम द कॉस्ट इन इज हैंड्स अर्लियर सर्विस टैक्स रिजीम में देर वॉज नो स्पेसिफिक प्रोविजन फॉर द पेमेंट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट देर वॉज नो स्पेसिफिक प्रोविजन एंड इट वॉज ओनली you know there uh, disputed matter where department sometimes used to ask for the interest however yahan pe specific provision kiya gaya hai whereby it is provided that the reversal of the itc should be with interest only the question arises is interest from which date from the date of invoice when i i mean from the date of taking the credit based on the invoice or whether from the date of from the 181st day in personally it is my opinion that the interest should be payable only from the 181st day 
एंड देर आफ्टर वेन ई मेक्स द पेमेंट ई कैन रिक्रेडिट रूल थर्टी सेवन में पूरा प्रोसीजर दिया गया है नाउ द पॉइंट हियर इज दैट वेदर दिस कंडीशन जो है वेदर इट इज वेलिड अगेन इफ यू सी सेक्शन सिक्सटीन टू प्रोवाइजो इसके अंतर्गत यह हंड्रेड एंड एटी डेज की कंडीशन दी गई है एंड इफ यू कंपेयर इट विद लैंग्वेज ऑफ रूल थर्टी सेवन देर इज देर इज ए टू मच ऑफ द वेरिएशन इन द गेप बिटवीन दिस टू टू मच ऑफ द एंड I beg your pardon. Uh, under Rule Thirty Seven, Sub Rule Three, there is a specific provision that the interest will be from the date of availing the ITC and not from the hundred and eighty-first day. That should be kept in mind. And this credit, uh, and mind you, hundred and eighty days are to be recorded from the date of invoice, and not from the date of receipt of the invoice, not from the date of the recording of the invoice in the books of the accounts of the buyer, not from the date of the accounting. It is from the date of invoice that should be kept in mind. Or वहाँ से मुझे 180 days की गिनती करनी है. If you see the entire rule, 37 rule is very very badly worded, and in some respects the validity of this provision can also be challenged. But I would only say caution is the better part of the valor, and therefore it would be better if this particular condition. Uh, is fulfilled to the maximum possible it may not be worth his while to make it a litigative issue uh, uh, and it would be better either to comply with it by making the payment within 180 days or to reverse the credit within 180 days and thereafter taking the recredit and uh, let me make it very clear under rule 374 it is very clearly provided that the time limit specified under section 164 Uh, for taking the credit will not apply to the recredit of such credit reverse after 180 days to explain it agar recipient buyer ne 180 days mein payment na karne ki wajah se itc agar reverse ki hai interest ke sath mein aur uske baad agar wo maan lo ke jab bhi 6 mahine 8 mahine 1 mahine 1 saal ke baad bhi agar wo payment apne buyer ko kar raha supplier ko kar raha hai तो वो क्रेडिट उसको ही कैन टेक दैट क्रेडिट ही विल हैव टू डिक्लेयर दिस थ्रू द रिटर्न द टाइम लिमिट व्हिच इज प्रिस्क्राइब अंडर सेक्शन 164 के आप नेक्स्ट ईयर के फाइनेंशियल ईयर के सितंबर की उसके बाद आप ये क्रेडिट नहीं ले सकते हो दैट टाइम लिमिट विल नॉट बी एप्लीकेबल टू द रीक्रेडिट ऑफ द आईटीसी व्हिच इज ऑलरेडी रिवर्स अंडर दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोविजन ये बात आपको ख्याल में रखनी है देयरफॉर दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट and there is a specific provision for this which is made under rule 37 sub rule 4 next annual return and reconciliation statement friends i have to only say this there are some couple of writs which have already been filed people are anxiously waiting ke whether 9 and 9c whether it will be extended further or not annual return jahan tak 9 ka sawal hai up to 2 crore there is absolutely it is been made optional Uh, it is for the taxpayer to take a call and tax advisor to correctly and uh, professionally advise his uh, client ke whether he should really file it or not though it is optional it may not be advisable to force the taxpayer to file uh, by you know i mean one has to take a very ethical and moral call into this ke whether i should ask my taxpayer to pay the file the annual return or not when he is below 2 crore this will apply to composition tax payers also so for them 1819 is now optional coming to the between 2 crore and 5 crore the 9 is compulsory they have to file annual return but 9c is actually not required to be filed that has been exempted for this type class of buyers and above 5 crore 9 and 9c both are compulsory now above 5 crore jinke liye 9 aur 9c compulsory hai सिंस नाइन सी के लिए स्पेसिफिकली कोई ड्यू डेट नहीं है नाइन सी कैन नॉट बी फाइल्ड अनलेस एन अंटिल नाइन इज फाइल्ड देन ऑब्वियसली नाइन की ड्यू डेट अपने आप नाइन सी के लिए भी हो जाती है और वो ड्यू डेट थर्टी फर्स्ट अक्टूबर है नाउ ऑब्वियसली इन दिस कोविड सिचुएशन ऑल द टेक्स पेयर एंड टेक्स प्रोफेशनल्स आर अंडर ट्रिमंडस प्रेसर एंड ऑब्वियसली दे मे नॉट बी इन अ पोजिशन टू फाइनलाइज द नाइन एंड नाइन सी इन 
personally my feeling is this that there is no need to worry this 9 uh, 31st october time limit should get exempt uh, extended further maybe mostly by two months but maybe in two installment one month each and that could be uh, probably so one need not really and assuming for a moment i have been telling my old cf fraternity my brother i mean i mean telling repeatedly to them ke please these are very difficult days these are unusual times because of covid 19 we have lot to take care of ourselves and our family also don't worry about missing the deadline suppose 31st october man lo ke extend nahi bhi hui wo extend ho rahi hai ye mera pakka vishwas hai ha chahe ek ek mahine ke liye do bar extend hogi ya wo to hogi wo mera pakka pura vishwas hai man lo chalo hypothetically nahi bhi hui and you are filing it say on 15 november you may file it in december you may file it in january then what is the what is the sky is not going to fall koi aasman to girne wala nahi hai there is a simply sitter a late fee which will be payable per day which is peanuts considering everything or 9c ke liye to late fee bhi nahi hai kare sirf penalty hai 25000 maximum if for any reason koi bhi hamare client ke 9 or 9c hum 31st october ke pehle file nahi kar pate hai in despite our best efforts and client best efforts also and agar date extend nahi hoti hai so please take the client into confidence don't work se- work yourself to death please don't do that there is nothing nothing to worry about and don't do any job in the haste and mind you i am told this discussion i had with this one of the senior most officers in the who is connected with the gst council he himself has been really concerned bole ke shailesh uh, why ca fraternity should be so much worried about because it would be much more dangerous to make the mistake in the haste in preparing the 9 and 9c so as to meet the deadline then file the belated 9 and 9c but correctly choice is yours health is must safety is must precautions and prayers are going to be the watchwords for us for you no know, because covid is not going to leave us for long time maybe another 5 months 6 months i don't know i don't want to timeline i know mujhe pura march mahina jaise मैं मार्च महीने से घर पे हूं मुझे मार्च महीने तक घर पे रहना है ये मेरी मानसिक तैयारी है सो दैट इज इंपोर्टेंट एंड ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट प्लीज डो नॉट वरी डोंट मेक एनी हेस्ट दाखिल करने के लिए डेडलाइन को मीट करने के लिए नाइन और नाइन सी भरने की आप चेष्टा न करें आप लेट भी हो गया अपने क्लाइंट को कॉन्फिडेंस में लेके एक्सप्लेनिंग हिम द सरकमटेंसिस डोंट वरी अबाउट इट ट्राई टू फाइल इट इन द बेस्ट पॉसिबल मैनर but without jeopardizing anything your safety your health and also uh, the correctness of the return which is paramount because ye return baad mein aap revise nahi kar paoge and then it will have a very serious ramifications we should be avoided this is my humble request to all of you in last 2 3 years i have been seeing how the my dear chartered accountant and brother sister how they have been working under tremendous pressure i am an advocate i have nothing to do with the compliance practice friends but i have been seeing that under what type of pressure they have been working please don't need to work under so much of pressure and i have seen a uh, few very young people you know who have succumbed finally which is extremely tragic and unfortunate so take care of yourself this compliance this type of compliance cannot uh, be allowed to really dictate your life and your personal life this is my personal request to all of you my personal suggestion to all of you baki mujhe pura vishwas hai that this is going to be extended next don't quote me please yeah. next and finally friends so these are the overall the subjects uh, which i wanted to clear mohit mindals and sal steels limited these are the two important judgments of the gujarat high court jisme gujarat high court ne ocean freight pe mohit mindal mein gst levy ko kharij kiya hai और साल स्टील्स लिमिटेड में गुजरात हाई कोर्ट ने सर्विस टैक्स की लेवी को खारिज किया है दे हैव डिक्लेयर्ड द प्रोविजंस एंड द रिलेवेंट नोटिफिकेशंस एज अल्ट्रा वायरस दिस आर टू वेरी वेरी साउंड जजमेंट आफ्टर दैट इन 2018 जस्ट लाइक द एयर फ्रेट ओशन फ्रेट हैज आल्सो बीन सब्जेक्टेड टू एग्जम्पन एंड नाउ द एग्जम्पन हैज बीन कंटिन्यूड अप टू थर्टी एथ सेप्टेम्बर फॉर वन मोर इयर इट हैज बीन कंटिन्यूड in my personal opinion 
ocean freight could not have been subjected to gst nor was it subjected to service tax at all jinhone ocean freight pe who have been compelled to pay the gst or who have been compelled to pay the service tax due to audit or due to dgi action or any other departmental action they can certainly challenge it by way of a high court agar gst unse vasulat ki gayi hai even before the exemption and even before 2018 ocean freight could not have been subjected under river importer could not have been subjected to reverse charge under G, uh, for ocean freight at all when cif pay jo custom duty vagere pay ho rahi hai there are number of grounds i am not going into detail high court has also gone into detail sum and substance one of the major ground is that that under section 9 sub section 3 jab mere foreign supplier mujhe by sea jab material bej raha hai और वो सीआईएफ वैल्यू पे जब मैं टैक्स भर रहा हूं द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज आल्सो सीआईएफ एंड देयर आफ्टर ही इज एक्चुअली सेंडिंग मी द गुड्स इन दैट केस आई एम एक्चुअली नॉट एंगेजिंग द शिपिंग लाइन दे आर बीइंग एंगेज्ड बाय द फॉरेन सप्लायर एंड अंडर 93 ओनली रिसिपिएंट कैन बी मेड लायबल रिसिपिएंट ऑफ द सर्विस कैन बी मेड लायबल टू पे टैक्स अंडर रिवर्स चार्ज ये ये जो सी ट्रांसपोर्टेशन की सर्विस जो शिपिंग लाइन की है वो मैं रिसिपिएंट एज ए इम्पोर्टर आई एम नॉट द रिसिपिएंट ऑफ सर्विस रिसिपिएंट ऑफ द रिसिपिएंट हैज बीन डिफाइंड अंडर सेक्शन टू अंडर सीजीएसटी एक्ट एज अन पर्सन हु रिसीव्स द गुड्स और सर्विसेज और बोथ एंड हु इज लायबल फॉर द पेमेंट ऑफ द कंसिडरेशन तो शिपिंग लाइन को पेमेंट कंसिडरेशन पे करने के लिए आई एम नॉट द रिस्पॉन्सिबल पर्सन एंड देर फोर आई कैन नॉट बी हेल्व कंसिडर टू बी रिसिपियंट ऑफ द सी ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सर्विस फ्रॉम द शिपिंग लाइन for the goods which i am procuring from foreign supplier under a contract uh, under a cif contract and therefore this reverse charge mechanism was per se unconstitutional and ultra virus section 93 and there are number of other arguments i am also of the opinion that this apply to even fob contracts also therefore under these circumstances those who have been compelled to pay the service tax or those who have been compelled to pay the gst on the ocean freight uh they, that's that demand or that recovery can certainly be challenged so these are friends my overall today's hot burning issues which i thought i would dwelt with you and uh, this concludes these are all live issues most of the issues are before the high court they are all being argued upon uh, whether it is uh, except one can say probably the section 50 recovery of interest on the gross amount would stand settled however there also the question would arise about the refund my right to claim the refund of the interest which i have paid on the gross amount including on the itc portion i have already explained that refund can be stayed otherwise at least from the demand perspective that issue is now probably more or less resolved by the government by force but it has been done we should wait for the now next uh, retrospective amendment in the financial bill whereby they will make it retrospective from 1st july all other issues are live issues they are all burning issues and and most of the issues involve the validity of the provisions constitutional validity of the provisions and they are all before the different high courts and given the facts and circumstances of the case these are all the issues which are worth fight worth fought for as i would say and uh, one has to be just very much alert and watchful on the developments taking place on each of these issues uh, in the coming days thank you thank you for that thank you sir thank you for the fruitful session uh, friends uh, if you have any queries you can post it or uh, you can request for animating yourself the session is open if uh, uh, selector allow uh, we can have some queries yeah i am comfortable okay members if you have any queries you can raise your hand uh, we can unmute you or you can just type either they can raise the hand then they can start uh, asking also so there is there is a query that can we ask uh, any query regarding annual return you can ask the query regarding annual return but generally so because i don't <laughs> I, i don't get into the compliance practice but still whatever query let me see if i can answer i will answer no problem okay friends you can go ahead with your queries
sir one of the issue is relating to interest and yeah. that is uh, now the circular has already been issued that mm. interest should be available chargeable only on the net amount not on the gross amount right. now still the controversy between the madras high court and the gujarat high court shall it remain and uh, has the government gone to the supreme court and even if the supreme court decide either way but the legality of the circular issued in i think june uh, in uh, i think very recently oh, 2020 which is a retrospective hmm. effect hmm. so there is be... as i understand the uh, the controversy conflicting judgments not gujarat conflicting judgments are between orissa mega engineering and the okay. madras high court refex okay and the latest judgment will be under mansarovar which is yet not out the judgment is still not out but okay. madras high court has given a favorable ruling and we are we are probably hoping that high court has also held that this amendment is retrospective so in my opinion as far as the controversy is concerned with the retrospective amendment uh, which will be carried out mere hisab se wo ya to texas and those amendment bill se hoga shayad government agar wo nahi lati hai winter session mein so then it will be done through the finance act, uh, finance bill in the budget and it will be given retrospective effect from 1st of july so wo controversy baad mein rehti nahi hai kuch bhi right thank you the only thing is that ke ke jinhone interest jaise maine kaha aage jinhone ye interest gross amount pe by force bhara hai ya jinke paas se garnishi provision through ya fir aur koi wajah uh, tarah se agar recover kiya gaya hai gross amount pe they can directly file the refund claim अगर दो साल सेक्शन 54 में अवेलेबल है तो फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ रिकवरी पेमेंट और अगर दो साल चले भी गए हैं दे शुड स्टिल फाइल द रिफंड क्लेम आफ्टर ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ऑल दिस अमेंडमेंट्स इन द बोर्ड सर्कुलर के दिस इज नाउ रिट्रोस्पेक्टिव एंड द रिकवरी इज नॉट परमिसिबल दिस कैन नॉट अप्लाई ओनली टू द न्यू पीपल फ्रेश पीपल ऑल इट शुड अप्लाई टू एवरीबॉडी एंड देन कीप द क्लेम अलाइव वन थिंग मोर लेट मी कॉम्प्लीमेंट यू सर ए ग्रेट प्रेजेंटेशन but it also leaves us a little worried as to what is the state of uh, uh, implementation of the gst ahead particularly Sir, my the, my personal feeling is yeah. and uh, i am privileged to normally address uh, ca fraternity uh, right from i been giving talks on uh, gst since 2015 practically yeah but uh, in last 3 years 3 and half years sub 75 odd lectures which i gave more, maybe more than 80 probably after this webinars so in last few months Uh, majority are of them i am fortunate to address the cf fraternity yeah two things i would say gst is not going to settle friends any time soon it is not settled anywhere in the world right uh, there is a lot of discussion going on at the oecd oecd is at the forefront organization of economic and cooperation De- development country jo 20 32 countries ka jo samuh bana hua hai ek sanyukta samuh hai they are at the forefront of the gst or weight design lot of lot of work is going on behind the curtain since last more than 2 3 decades probably in fact including whether there is a viable alternative to even gst philosophy also so these are all going on but today gst is getting implemented through through uh, there are three ways by which gst can be implemented one is invoice credit method second is capital addition method and third is subtraction method अब कैपिटल एडिशन मेथड और सब्ट्रेक्शन मेथड नो बडी फॉलोस लास्ट में खाली जापान कर रहा था लेकिन नाउ इवन एवरीबडी हैज फॉलन इनटू इनवॉइस क्रेडिट मेथड आई बाय द माय प्रोक्योरमेंट ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज अंडर इनवॉइस आई पे द टैक्स आई टेक द क्रेडिट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इनवॉइस आई डिस्चार्ज माय लायबिलिटी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ माय इनवॉइस ओनली अंडर व्हिच आई एम मेकिंग द सप्लाइज एंड एडजस्ट द क्रेडिट दिस इज अ सिंपल वैल्यू एडिशन इफेक्टिवली आई एम पेइंग वैल्यू एडिशन but because of the very nature self enforcing policy of the gst ke jab mujhe credit mil rahi hai to main kyun invoice bina invoice ka maal lo this is probably not working and men are men nobody wants to pay the tax even under this regime we are seeing type of frauds which are getting committed so two three things i would say gst probably will not get it is a very fraud prone tax there are 13 to 14 type of different frauds which are identified under gst regime which are all tabulated please don't ask me what are those frauds mm-hmm. so therefore it is a very fraud prone tax which will continue to be a challenge for the economy as a professional br- people and as a citizens of this great country my personal request would be to see that even knowing un- unknowingly unwittingly unintentionally also we should not be 
uh, encouraging this fraud in any manner. That is one part of it. Second, GST will not get settled. It will be continuously evolution process. I am expecting in another couple of years, and I have been advocating continuously in last one year, okay, please don't make any major amendments. Instead of that, let this law in whatever form you have amended, unko settle hone do. People have understood in whatever manner, let them imply, uh, implement this law. But simultaneously, start working on the entirely new legislation based on the experience and the, uh, and, and the lessons we have learned uh, in last three years. Let it come in 25, 2025, 2060, 26, whenever. But ye, ye mein abhi aap jada mat that is my earnest request continuously on this. Having said that, the compliance will become more and more difficult under GST as I see that. For the professional tax professionals, regulatory pressure is going to increase in coming days. This I have been saying in last six, seven years continuously, not only under indirect tax, even under corporate laws, even under IT, even under other law. Since chartered accountants are expected to be their grooming is such that normally they get involved into many fields. Your regulatory pressure ko withstand karna, client would be only looking at upon you. Please understand ke how far, what type of pressure you can take. Compliance will have a very, very limited role to play in the coming years. World over mein compliance practice jada, uh, isko jada mahatwa nahi diya jata hai. Because GST is a new law, therefore here there is a too much of pressure on the compliance and 9 and 9C and 1 and 2A and 2B. In the coming years, compliance practice will become unaffordable either for the professional or it will become unaffordable for the client. Please believe me, this is my reading. And therefore, one has to continuously raise the bar. Loko padna hai, berekt ko padna hai, WhatsApp pe advice nahi magni hai, pahile directly, circulars ko nahi mahatwa dena hai directly, advanced authority ruling, I don't, I, I mean, I would not say anything about advance authority ruling. Please read the Bear Act. Unless you read the Bear Act and rules, try to understand, read and analyze yourself. One would never be able to read. GST is a very fascinating piece of legislation. There is going to be a floodgate of litigation which is going to open in coming days. Ye COVID ke karan hua nahi hai, bhi to ho chuki hai. Ye bhi me pichle de, do saal se keh raha hu, openly platforms se. Aap logo ko, you have to, as a professional, continue to raise the bar and the quality of the dispute which you are handling, you have to look into this. Compliance, jo, jo karna hai, jo unavoidable hai, utna hi karna hai, compliance will not be the lifeline practice. Believe me this. This is my personal view. Uh, friends, any more queries? Uh... So there is a question regarding uh, annual return. Yes. Uh, while filing annual return for financial year 2017-18, ITC credit of financial year 2018 is considered. What should be done while annual return of financial year 2018-19? No, it means that ke 17-18 ki credit jo chut gai thi, sahi 17-18 mein leni, leni thi, wo aap annual return mein 18-19 mein aapne liye aur us mein aapne dikha hi hai. 17-18 में आप दिखा रहे हो तो 18-19 के क्रेडिट में यू सी प्रीवियस ईयर की कॉलम की भी शायद कॉलम है उसमें कि आपने ये क्रेडिट 17-18 की ली है देयर इज अ कॉलम प्रोबेबली के द पास्ट ईयर ऑफ 17-18 की क्रेडिट हमने 18-19 में ली है एंड देयर इज अ सेपरेट कॉलम फॉर दैट नथिंग टू बी डन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट इट शुड बी शोन इन अ सेपरेट कॉलम एंड 9C में भी शायद इसके लिए कॉलम है हेलो यस मैम uh, sir, actually the query is that the when filing the return for 1718, mm. ITC of 1890 is being taken. Okay, so actually you have uh, April ke baad jo credit in 1819, mein, which is already accrued yes. to you. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. That, uh, and because uh, credit is supposed to accrued in April 18, you have filed the 1718 return say in June 18. Yes. And, and while filing in June 18, you have taken that April 7, April 18 credit. Yes. Actually, the bills were pertaining to 17, 18, but the materials were received in 18, 19. That's why the credit was taken. But By mistake, they had taken, they had interpreted in that manner. No, no, one sec, one sec. First of all, was it taken before the September? Suppose I'm 16, 4 ke time limit, ko mania karte hai, if we are agreeing to the time limit, was it taken before September 18? Yes, it is taken then, before September 18, but then in what is wrong in that? 
in books of accounts the entry is pertaining in 1819 only correct so uh, invoice is of 1718 yes, correct material is received uh, in 1819 material was received in 1819 and when the credit was taken in a, uh, april 18 april 18 then what what is wrong in that madam but when while, while filing the annual return of 17 no so that is only a mistake that okay. is only a mistake it should not have been shown in the annual return that's all so what uh, should be done you see the matter no no uh, in 1819 aap wapas bata dijiye na usko you show so it in 1819 so fir 1718 ka jo bhi hai no that, no that, that you see by... i'll tell you one thing hmm. matter would have been a different problem the problem would have been agar on the basis of the invoice recorded in 1718 jab aapke paas material nahi aaya hai fir bhi agar invoice ke base pe agar aapne 1718 mein credit le li hoti then there would have been a problem because that is not allowed yes correct but yes. you have received the material in 1819 invoice is of 1718 agar material 1718 mein aa bhi gaya hota under the invoice still you have time up to september 18 to claim the credit which legislature has given you okay so legislature has already recognized ke ek a tax payer can take the credit even in the next year also yes. isliye to next year ke september tak ki time limit de gayi hai hmm correct तो आपको उसको 1819 में दिखाना है एन्यूअल रिटर्न में एन्यूअल रिटर्न डज नॉट क्रिएट एस सच एनी लायबिलिटी यू कैन ओनली लेटर ऑन इन द रिकंसल इफ यू वांट यू कैन राइट अ लेटर कि दिस वाज इन एडवांटेजली आल्सो सोन इन 1718 दो द क्रेडिट वाज टेकन इन 1819 व्हिच हैज नाउ बीन सोन इन द 1819 एन्यूअल रिटर्न ओके सर थैंक यू सो वी बिकॉज़ दिस विल आल्सो टैली विद योर 3 बी ऑफ 1819 ओके तो कुछ भी हमें डीआरसी थ्री जीरो चलन से कुछ पे करवाने की नहीं नहीं कुछ भी नहीं कहीं कहीं पर करवाने की जरूरत नहीं मैडम नथिंग नथिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड थैंक यू थैंक यू सर फ्रेंड्स एनी मोर क्वेरीज Uh, sir, since there are no more queries, uh, I would like yeah, that to. That is fine. Uh, I understand. It is probably a bit a uh, uh, exhaustive and tiring one. So. No, no, I'm sir. Sure. It was a wonderful <laughs> session. Just no. I would I would like to give the formal vote of thanks. It Please. was indeed a pleasure of Surat Branch of ICI to have you here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. We would like that uh, you have completed your 80th uh, lecture for CA fraternity and advocate. <laughs> we would like to to uh, wish you that soon you can complete your century and that to with our branch sir yes thank you very much it thank has you. been my pleasure my pleasure for such a patient and such a whole hearted uh, you know the participation uh, i will uh, just modify some correction i need to do this in the powerpoint presentation so please uh, yes hold it on for some time uh, mostly tomorrow i will send it across and then the branch can actually circulate among the part, uh, members right okay sir thank okay. you thank you okay thank you thank you very much and all the good luck to everybody right. thank you sir thank you